here is what the device looks like when it's pulsing. Richard Hanbury got the idea for this pulsing pain control mask called Sauna when his own doses of morphine and opioids stopped working in 1992. When I was 19, I was driving down a road in the Yemen and I had a choice of a head-on collision next to a petrol truck or to go off a bridge. I went off the bridge because um, I figured we were dead either way and I wanted to leave some remains behind. Um, and that resulted in a spinal injury from T8 to T10. And that resulted in a nerve damage pain problem that was so severe I was given a five year life expectancy. 26 years later, Hanbury isn't just pain free. He's presenting his solution at Stanford. Um, this is our first device. Um, we are neuromodulation for the management of pain and I made the earlier device to be a better painkiller so I didn't have to take opioids. And uh, it wiped out all of my underlying pain. Hanbury says the masks coordinated pulses of light and sound calm pain by stimulating the audio and visual cortex of the brain. He originally set out to help people sleep. He then realized he could solve a bigger problem with the technology. Chronic pain. It affects about 100 million Americans across the U.S. and it's a number that's greater than those combined suffering from heart disease, cancer, diabetes. In five years' time, there's no reason why anybody should suffer uh, chronic pain anymore. Sana got him off opioids. Now he hopes it could help stop America's deadly dependence on the painkillers. About 130 Americans are dying from opioid overdoses every single day. This is a big public health crisis, and a lot of people want the non-opioid options. Sauna is part of a rapidly growing field of non-opioid medical technology called neuromodulation. Specific neurological sites in the body are electrically or chemically stimulated in order to alter how we feel pain. Anecdotally, in the tests that we've done so far, on average, people are taking between 30 and 50 percent less opioids when they have a, a, a choice of using the Sauna device. Last year, the National Institutes of Health announced a $500 million pain research initiative that will include more clinical trials for non-opioid alternatives, all aimed at ending addiction long term. Hanbury says sauna will be a powerful alternative to opioids, more than just distraction therapy like virtual reality pain treatments. We're aiming for two things with this device, to get that immediate relaxation effect which reduces pain and also to change the underlying base level of pain by increasing neuroplasticity to undo the chronic nature of the pain. So VR is great for the short term, one-off uses, two-off uses. Um, we're aiming to be something that actually works longer term. As with many new med tech devices, Sana's long-term effectiveness remains unproven. I think the thing that's going to be really interesting is the longevity of a lot of these devices. Um, you know, whether they're going to, the, the pain relief is going to last uh, and if it, or is it just going to, you know, be taken over by the next thing when the person realizes that their pain hasn't gone away? Sauna is meant to be used for the 15 minutes before sleep, or for 15 minute bursts throughout the day. As you go to sleep, your brain goes through a series of cycles of brain wave activity, and that, that's one of the critical parts of getting good deep sleep. And it is also true that if you don't have good deep sleep because you're in pain, uh, that's going to make your pain worse. You're going to be more sensitized to pain the next day. So I can see how this mechanism would work, but I think what bothered me about their website was that it wasn't clear that that was the, the mechanism they were going after. An initial 75-person clinical trial last year showed people using sauna as designed had three times the amount of pain reduction as those who used it in a placebo mode. Scientists warn the placebo effect is strong because measuring pain is so subjective. Just because someone else had a pain reduction by using a particular device doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Who doesn't want to believe that something's going to help their pain? And as a result, they're going to pay a lot of money for it, they're going to have this expectancy, and so I think the placebo effect is going to be really strong for a lot of these devices. Sana is currently in clinical trials for classification as a medical device. Hanbury is hoping for FDA approval by October. I'm optimistic. Even if it's a placebo, hopefully there potentially could be a mechanism behind how that is actually helping patients. Whether it's just even a reduction in anxiety or depressed mood symptoms, that's going to have a positive effect on how well patients respond to our other pain treatments. Neuromodulation devices are already approved to treat one of the most common causes of pain, migraines. These severe headaches can last up to 72 hours and affect one in seven Americans every year. 
migraines are often treated with expensive drugs called triptans, and in 35% of migraine visits to emergency departments, doctors still prescribe opioids. But using uh, opioids to treat migraine is a nonsense. In 2017, the FDA approved a wearable device, Cephaly, for acute treatment of migraines. It's placed on the forehead for one or two hours during a migraine, where it sends electric pulses through the skin into the trigeminal nerve, calming the main culprit for migraine pain with a sedative effect. Cephaly's latest clinical trial in 2018 on 600 patients showed that after two hours of using the device, 30 to 35 percent are free from migraine attacks, and 72 percent get significant pain relief. It costs $500 and is not covered by insurance. Another type of neuromodulation device is called peripheral nerve stimulation, or PNS. The concept of these peripheral nerve stimulation devices is to generate an electrical field around the nerves. So the nerves are the way we sense pain in our periphery, in our hands or our feet. And what that electrical field does is to block the pain signals coming back to the spinal cord in the brain. The technology isn't new. It's similar to what's found in pacemakers but it only recently started being used to treat pain. We go right to the site of where the pain is rather than trying to treat it systemically like spinal cord stimulators do and uh, opioids do. Bioness's stim router is implanted through one or two incisions in a simple surgery. Small wire-like electrodes are inserted next to a nerve. An external device can then stimulate the nerve by sending electrical pulses through the electrodes, and the results are striking. Over 90% of the patients had a reduction of 50% in their opioid usage, and 71% of them had a big improvement in their pain scores. Last year, the FDA approved a less permanent PNS device that's even easier to implant with a single needle through the skin. It's called Sprint. It's placed on the back or limbs for up to 60 days to treat pain in one or even two different areas. Stim router and Sprint are both covered by Medicare and most insurance plans. We want to make sure that whatever cutting edge technology or new devices or new interventions that they're widely available to all patients suffering with chronic pain. Because it's such a large number of people, then we need to have practical cost effective solutions that can get to every corner of the country. There's one over the counter neuromodulation device that requires no incisions. It's called Quell. It's a battery-powered device worn below the knee that sends electric stimulation through the nerves in the leg, reducing the pain signals sent up to the brain. 81% of patients reported a reduction in their chronic pain and 67% reduced their opioid usage. It's not covered by insurance, but you can get it on Amazon or in drugstores for $300. With a sleek IDEO-designed sports band and a mobile app that lets users adjust the intensity and track their sleep and gait, Quell is meant to appeal to the masses. Dream seven years from now is that uh, chronic pain is no longer um, a thing, that there is a toolkit that everyone knows that you go into that toolkit and some of the things are gonna help you and you figure out how to remove chronic pain and that in turn would then wipe out the opioid crisis. Richard Hanberry is also aiming for accessibility with sauna. <laughs> he hopes to make it available over the counter by the end of the year, with an eventual price around $400. We're not going to be the entire solution, we're going to be part of it. There'll be better drugs, there'll be um, digital solutions, there'll be VR, and there'll be us. My hope is that all together, between us all, we eradicate chronic pain.